Hey, what's up guys? It's T-Bone here and welcome back to another episode of playing Legendary Game of Heroes. So today, I'm really excited to talk to you about this Water Slayer deck that I've built based on the preview from the previous uh, episode where I uh, thought that the combination of the Circassa, uh, which is a free card, and Maelstrom, which is the main feature card, I thought that combination was going to be really strong. I just didn't know how strong it would be. At least I thought it was going to be interesting. And so uh, I thought that what I would do is I would just wait and see what I get from the free cards. And I did get the Maelstrom from the free Fight Start collection. So, uh, and I happened to have the uh, the gold, the lucky gold uh, from the pre one of the previous events. So I was able to just level them up to six stars. And, you know, I got Sarcasa for free just by playing. And then I invested in uh, a thousand gems to get the second Sarcasa. And it has been really fun actually so what i want to do is i just want to uh, showcase this and i want to show in stages because there's this new relic that came out with a new feature now uh so storm hammer just came out today and in addition to creating uh, water gems it also now has this new uh feature called vortex if more than eight water gems exist on the board create one water power gem one as long as the dragons on the team so this is literally a game changer okay so this is so powerful and what i want to do is i'm just going to uh, take this out for now and i'll show you what i did um what what i was working with because i want to show how this deck actually works and then sort of build up to uh sort of how it all plays together so i'm going to take this relic out for now and i'm going to just show the basic mechanic of this deck all right, and so uh, let's go ahead and use one of these uh, kill bosses. And as you'll notice, I also have uh, Icarus and uh, my uh, Wicked Witch here, and I will talk about what they do. So my Wicked Witch really is here just to help me survive. Uh, her passive her passive skill actually allows me to um, you know to survive longer because uh, the, the the boss does deal pretty good damage and I'm able to revive 10% uh, of my health every single turn so that really just helps me uh, not worry about dying and now you can see that uh, the battle skill has been activated and you can see that there's 24 intensity total here I'm gonna let it build up one more here uh, just so that uh, you can go up to about 30 or so and then what I'll do is I'm gonna activate Maelstrom and then I'll activate uh, the two Sarcasa. You can see that it has already generated uh, lots of gems here. I'm going to just do a quick swap here, and then you'll see that as it, the, uh, in the next turn, in intensity actually goes up again, and then more gems are are, um, are now created. And as you, and then basically this is the second turn, and then the third turn, you can see there's also a uh, an icon in the top corner here that indicates that um, that the tidal wave uh, power is. The, uh, is activated and so you can see there's uh, three turns in a row uh, where I just kept building uh, new gems and let's just go ahead and try here and see okay and I'll wait one more turn to activate Maelstrom once more and so that now the key here though is to do some quick swaps and now the intensity is at about 78, 82 and now I'm going to go ahead and activate Maelstrom and you can see now I have nine gems like create every time and now I'm going to activate uh, Icarus because what she does is she actually would um, increase the drop rate of your uh, of your blue gems uh, until the next turn so as there's more and more um, you know uh, gems that are matched more spaces are, are filled uh, you can just see that more blue gems fall and you just deal more damage that way so this is sort of the basic mechanics and I and I didn't really even do a whole lot there all I did was just you know showcase the ability of this deck and you can see that I already dealt uh, I did a free uh, zero attack there so I already dealt over one bi one billion damage just by doing that okay I didn't really even do anything uh, special uh, to to try and deal the damage I just kind of let the turns go all right and now I'll sort of play uh, play through again going uh, the way that I normally would play without the relic and I'll show you what it looks like with a relic okay so Let's go ahead and uh, do this again. Let's just go ahead and finish the boss. So the key here is, um, you know, without the relic, I do have to make sure that I uh, match enough gems to get um, the power uh, the power gauge going. And I need one more. So you need nine gems in order to activate the power uh, in order to activate the the power skill of uh, the battle skill. I mean, and then so I'm going to go ahead and uh, do a quick match here. 
And once it's activated, I'm also going to focus on now uh, creating as many um, power gems as I can across the board, regardless of the um, the actual color of the gem. And obviously, the you know the bigger power gems I can create, the better. So I'm going to focus on trying to build uh, power gem fours. All right, and um, you know also use the blue gems. Uh, that's also possible. And what I want to do is, as I'm building them, I want to try and put them next to each other. And I want to try and protect uh, the power gems from getting uh, destroyed by accident. And because what I want to do is, I want to utilize them a little later. And you'll see uh, the reason why. Uh, so Circassa, as the intensity builds up, you can see that it actually would uh, start, you know, creating more and more power gems because uh, for every ten intensity that you build it would actually go and uh, create one power gem. Okay, so you can see I'm at 56 now. And I'm actually just gonna, gonna stop here and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna focus on doing quick swaps. And what I mean by that is just, you know, really quickly uh, do one three gem match and then immediately move another gem uh, in a way that it doesn't actually match. What it does is it ends your turn, right? So if you can do this really quickly, uh, you can end your turn really fast and you can save a lot of time. I am at uh, 80, 92, 96 intensity. I'm just going to do one more. And uh, so this turn now, I am at uh, over 100. I'm going to go ahead and activate Maelstrom. And then you can see as the uh, Sarcasa uh, power goes um, is activated, I actually convert uh, the other power gems, even though it's a different color, into blue. All right, and you can see here uh, just by doing this, I'm dealing about um, 1.2 total billion in one shot okay so this is sort of a uh, one shot type play whereas the previous one is a multi-turn play uh, using the full power of the deck and now let's go and add this relic back in and see what difference that makes so this relic is um, is is new uh, in terms of the um, ability that it has that creates additional power gems so let's go ahead and add that in. And it does change the mechanic a little bit. And, and, and before I do this, one thing I have to mention is um, this style of play for me only works because I have the witch. Uh, well, not the witch, the Wicked Queen. Okay, so the Wicked Queen does heal for 10% of loss HP every turn. Uh, some of the other cards are uh, available you can use is the Dark Leafer uh, and Aladdin. And if you don't have any of those cards, uh, let's say you're still relatively new, uh, then some of the cards that you can try and focus on would be, uh, let's see, cards that either delay turns or give you immunity. So an example is Mr. Crow, which is a more recent uh, light uh, slayer card. And you can see that his battle skill is um, you know, immune to damage for one turn. It does have a longer cooldown. It does have a pretty high uh, charge rate. It requires 13 gems. But there are other cards that do the same thing. Uh, if you have them, such as Catherine or uh, Perseus or the Dark Lady Agista, uh, they all delay turns or uh, give you immunity to damage. And so those cards could also help a little bit in that if you activate it just before the boss attacks, you can save yourself at least two turns to build up the intensity to do something similar. All right, so let's go back now and uh, do, uh, do this again, this time with the relic in place, and let's see. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's, let's finish this off. I mean, it will... Uh, it should be fine for the purposes of showing how much damage to get deal. All right, so with this new relic in place, every turn, as long as there's eight or more gems, you can see that it will create uh, more than, um, it'll, it'll go ahead and create a power gem. And so let's go ahead and again, let's activate the power, let's activate the, the battle skill here. And now the difference here is as I'm activating this, I'm going to try and keep the number of blue gems on the board as high as possible because uh, it's to my benefit for it to keep, you know, creating more um, more power gems. So you can see now that I've uh, sort of got it back down. And now I'm going to just go ahead and employ the strategy again where I'm just going to do some, some quick matches. And the benefit here is because I keep getting uh, power gems created. I'm not really concerned so much about building the additional power gems at this point. All I'm doing is making sure that I don't um, accidentally uh, remove my, um, you know, accidentally match my blue gems. And uh, it does make a little bit slower, but with the total number of, uh, you know, gems that, are, that blue power gems are coming on board, it, it doesn't, um, you know, it, it's, it's okay here. 
All right, so you can see I'm sort of now have to be a little bit careful, but I am already uh, also at above uh, 100 intensity because the relic is also helping me every single turn. So let's just go ahead and now activate this, and you can see the, whole, the board is full. Activate Icarus, swap the power gems, and you can sort of see that uh, each card now is dealing at least 1 billion damage. And this is a little bit of a lucky, unlucky turn because I didn't actually match anything on the drops. But you can see just, you know, by adding this one relic in, I'm already dealing a lot more damage per card. And you can only imagine what it's going to be like if you have multiple relics. So for every relic that you put in, uh, you'll have that many more power gems each turn. So uh, this deck is basically as I expected. It doesn't actually require the ultra rare card. All right. So let's go back and take a look again. Uh, so like you can see I didn't actually invest in the deck here. Uh, it, you don't actually need the, the ultra rare, which does the following, right? So you can see I'm actually going to use the 13 times. So this battle skill, uh, you know, maybe you will have, you know, uh, a lot of damage the first, like so, sort of using the battle skill to deal damage there. They actually boost it a little bit in that uh, it used to be half, like 1725, I think, uh, for the attack, plus an additional 50%, and now it's an additional 100%. And the passive here... You know, create one water gem and then a chance of uh, for a power gem four. So yes, you, you will get better damage overall with that, but that requires a lot of investment. And this is with minimal investment and obviously with a lot of luck on my part, uh, I was able to deal, you know, just as much damage as I need to be successful in taking down guild bosses. All right, so this is the deck I'm running with. Uh, hopefully, this helps you. Um, you know, as you may, if if you get Maelstrom, definitely you wanna. Uh, I would hope that this helps you in creating this sort of setup. And if you don't have anything that gives you health every turn, look for something that delays or gives you immunity. Icarus is a relatively it's an older card, but a lot of people have it now. Uh, so put her in if you don't already. Uh, I think you'll see a big difference there. Uh, if you don't have Icarus, uh, then you can put another card that gives you a turn delay or immunity. Basically, your main damage dealer is going to be the middle three here. Okay, so put in the relic and do some quick swaps, and uh, hopefully this will help you, uh, you know, take down the guild bosses in your guild. All right, so that's it for this episode. I just wanted to showcase this. I'm pretty happy about this deck. Uh, it's it's fun, and fun is what it's all about. Right. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.